Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 2nd of August 2011. We've had a proton flare. Region 1261 produced an M1 flare that is still in progress as we speak, and as we shall see later, there was a proton event associated with it. Now, an M1 flare is a fairly large flare, but is by no means the largest the Sun has ever produced. Today's trivia question is how many times brighter than this M1 flare was the largest flare ever observed by astronomers? And for bonus points, you can say when and where it occurred. The answer will be given at the end. From the GOES X-ray plot, you can see that we've had four C flares since yesterday and the M flare that is currently in progress. Now note the different nature of the M flare than all the previous flares we've seen. I've mentioned that most of these flares are rather short and impulsive flares, which indicate growth in a region. This is a long duration event that goes on for many hours. This is usually indicative of an eruptive event, which we've not seen from any of these regions to date. And associated with these, there is usually a fairly substantial coronal mass ejection. So that'll be something to look for when we look at the coronagraph data later. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what's been going on there. Region 1265 seems relatively stable, but is going over the west limb, so we'll lose that in the next day or two. Region 1264 has been downgraded by NOAA to a spotless plage, though if I look on the SDO high resolution data, I think I can see a couple of small pores there still. But it's not a very strong region and will not produce any activity unless it suddenly starts growing again. Region 1260 seems relatively stable but has, and has produced no activity. Regions 1261 and 1263 are the ones that have been producing the flares, and of course the M flare came from 1261, the morphology of which has changed radically over the last few days. Now on the northeast limb there's a new region coming over and is very bright in x-rays but at the moment I see no sunspots there which is very surprising so I'm only assuming they must be behind the limb although it's not unprecedented that we've had activity from spotless plage before but it's just very rare. In all of the movies I'd like you to focus on the uh, activity in region 1261. In the sunspot movie particularly how the sunspots have evolved over the last 48 hours. In the magnetic movie, you can see that the region continues to grow and change quite radically uh, as time goes by. And it's that change in the presence of strong magnetic fields that's likely to produce the flares. In the transition region movie, that's about 50,000 degrees, we can see that region 1251 flares right at the end of the sequence. But leading up to that time, there's lots of activity in both it and region 1263. In the low temperature coronal movie, that's about 600,000 degrees, you can see how variable all the active regions are. However, it's region 1261 that's been producing the flares. And that's because the motions of the sunspots are storing up more energy in the magnetic field to be released in the form of flares. So now let's take a closer look at the M flare itself. Activity starts building up in the middle of the region. Eventually, a very bright ribbon of emission appears in the north central part of the region, which eventually evolve into a long arcade of loops which gradually fade away. This is what produces the long duration part of the long duration event. In the high temperature coronal movie, that's about 2 million degrees, you can see this new region coming over the northeast limb. See how bright it is, and that's why I'm surprised that there are no sunspots associated with it as yet. Unfortunately, the SOHO data is running a few hours behind, so we don't get to see if there's a coronal mass ejection from this event as yet. However, we can go to the stereo data, particularly the stereo ahead data, and there's a beautiful image of a CME heading straight at the Earth, which is to the left. So it is possible in the next one to three days that we'll have a geomagnetic storm from this event. The ACE data show us the state of the solar wind, and the temperature and the density of the solar wind has remained relatively stable for the last 24 hours. However, as predicted, the speed of the solar wind has steadily dropped, and I think that trend will continue. The high energy electron flux has been increasing steadily, and as you can see, we've got our first proton event. Now it's not a very exciting one from the point of view that the 100 MeV proton shown in green only just about increased, but at least it shows that the channel is working. The rural zones are looking relatively quiet compared with yesterday, and the KP index has been varying between 0 and 3, although this high speed coronal wind stream was enough to give us a few aurora as pictured here. If you want to see more of these pictures, go to spaceweather.com. So in summary then, the x-ray background has risen to the B6 level, the sunspot number is a very healthy 130, the radio sun intensity is at 125 solar flux units, solar wind speed has fallen to 460 kilometers per second with a density of much less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. 
So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that the chances of getting C flares is quite high. Chances of getting an M flare is good. And it's even possible we might get an X flare. The sunspot spot number will remain high. Chance of getting a chrome mass ejection is good. The solar wind speed will go lower. And the chance of getting a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is very poor. In the slightly longer term, we expect this region over the northeast limb to rotate fully onto the disk. The coronal mass ejection should take one to three days to reach here. And when it does, and if it is geo-effective, we may get a minor geomagnetic storm out of it. So the clue to the answer to the trivia question was that I asked, what was the largest flare observed by astronomers, not by solar physicists? The largest flare ever observed was on a star, Two Pegasi, about six years ago. And get this, that flare was a hundred million times larger than the M flare that we just observed. That would have had some very serious consequences for the Earth, like, like our civilizations would probably be reduced to rubble, assuming any of us survived. But now rest assured that the Sun will not be producing any events like this. So just be thankful that we live round a star that is quiescent enough that we survived, but variable enough to be interesting. That's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.